G'day and welcome back for video 5 of 5 of the World of Warships training video series. I am Noppers and I am pleased to present this video which wraps up the demonstration of the first hour and second hour of a new account. This video is titled The Second Hour Ship Hits the Fan and we have a huge bunch of things to cover. For information I have a t-shirt from Wargaming from PAX a few years ago with that Ship Hits the Fan quote on it so it's kind of relevant I guess. Specifically though, we will check out the Wix, the US Tier 3 Destroyer. Plenty of torpedoes going downrange here, so we get a chance to chat about that aspect a little more, as well as the gunnery gameplay from a destroyer. We then take out the Clemson, the US Tier 4 Destroyer, for a run, and experience an up-close personal battle with a heap of enemy. Finally, the favourite of many, the Battleship. We get to take out the South Carolina and see what she can do. For now, sit back and enjoy. The first thing we'll do is have a look at the modules that are available. We've got some free XP there and we want the Clemson, but we have to get through the modules and this ship. We know it's got a smoke gen and an engine boost, but let's look. We've got a hull we can upgrade. That's nice, but the torpedoes are probably where I want to focus because that'll give me more damage and speed. So we'll buy that one. And if we're lucky, we've got enough there, I think, from my maths that we can actually purchase the hull as well. Yes, we do. That'll give us that extra layer of hit points and so on for defensiveness. We go now quickly and have a look at the exterior and check out the camouflage and make sure we put some camo on to increase our concealment and then look at the flags and uh, we'll buy equal speed Charlie London's for extra XP. But a point of note here as we enable auto resupply it's got ticked resupply using in-game currency if unavailable. What that means is that when we run out of flags for that particular type it'll spend doubloons on us. So that's a tricky little way of getting your coin out of your pocket. We're good to go though, so let's skip across into the battle here. And the first thing, as we always like to do, is zoom out to the map view and have a bit of a look. That's where I want to go, down through Bravo into Charlie. And the enemy are going to be all over on that left-hand side of the map, of course. Split into two groups for this particular battle like we are. So I'll indicate here my actual probable path. So it is to B cap, or Bravo cap and watch it and see what's coming from the south and up the north there is where the main thread is going to be so I'm going to be looking out to my starboard side as I go in a bit and because I'm a destroyer I'm up front I'm pretty quick and I'm going to be the first one to light everyone up as we sail in here uh, we note that we've got those good torpedoes but the range is pretty short let's go in and check this and make sure that we've got our ranges set properly we're going to put our AA circle on if we need to, but there are no um, carriers in this battle. But we will disable our AA anti aircraft as default. It's a good habit to get into, so that was the P key I pressed there. And we'll keep sailing across. You can see how far ahead of my team that I actually am at the moment. And they're all going straight across to the cap at Alpha, whereas I'm going to sail between these islands and I should get a light sometime soon. Uh, there's my team. Hey guys, how you going? lovely to see them and it does get a bit lonely up here when you're in a destroyer you are really out there on a limb and you're hopeful fingers crossed that your team are going to help you um, she's a beautiful little ship this one it's got as you can see the two sets of torpedo launchers on either side and that means we can punch lots down range as we know uh, like the uh, Samson could so we're going to send out our speculators first of all and hopefully there'll be some enemy up here. There's no white cone there marked. So we hadn't got anybody locked. But, oh wow, we're spotted already. There's our white cone. We've already locked onto someone. So bam, torps down range quick as possible. And that is an enemy destroyer. So this is quite often what happens. You'll come across an enemy destroyer like that. So we'll pop smoke straight away because I don't really want to have everybody shooting at me. And you can see I keep going detected, not detected. That's because my ship is going faster than my smoke can cover us key difference in comparison to the Samson here are the fact that there are six torpedoes going down range from that salvo um, but my gunnery hasn't changed it's still terrible and I am now slowed right down to a, a stop in my smoke on the cap so I'm putting some rounds down range from my main batteries this is they're not going to do a lot of damage these rounds but they are going to chip away at anything I, I've trimmed a battleship down from 40,000 hit points to pretty much nothing with just guns before from smoke and there's not much they can do about it which really annoys everyone and oh I was a bit unlucky there to not get that kill 
a uh, bit of a check around for situational awareness purposes and we've still got ships closing on us so it's time to start sending more talks down range there's my two sets of three i am detected now because i am in inside a, a range and we can see see how i've trimmed that cone down the white cone down to small so i've hit the three key a second time to get a narrow band of torps at this ship so we've got the first set of torps going down and we're going to put some guns on him anyway because i'm about to circle back around to my smoke so and no one's shooting at me so i'm going to try and get as many rounds down range as i can uh this guy's actually turned cleverly towards his defensive area or turned away from the enemy which means all of my tops are going to miss him unfortunately but i have such a quick reload rate that i've circled back up to my smoke i probably should have gone in there a little bit quicker or a little bit further but it's all right no one's shooting at me still so i'm going to take the chance here i'm going to Put a heap of torps down. There's some enemy torps coming in too, so you've got to be careful of that. We are bleeding a lot of friendlies here, but I'm going to get my first kill there quite nicely. And I'm circling away again to get the next salvo of torps off. So let's talk about a few aspects here of torpedoing. Why am I choosing a narrow band? Primarily because that ship is so close that I don't need to spread and hope with the torps. I can punch everything pretty much at him. He's not going to be able to outmaneuver him too much. Uh, probably was a little bit unlucky there and only getting one hit. But I'm going to circle back around with my rapid speed and maneuverability and great turning circle. And we'll probably take some damage here. Yep, there we go. Module was damaged. But launch some torps at point blank range. Three in the side. Thanks for coming. And a repair to get me out of there and a quick engine boost. And I've gone invisible. How did I do that? I stopped shooting. I stopped shooting my main battery guns. I was only working torpedoes. Torpedoes don't give you away when you shoot them, uh, except for the fact that when they see them coming in, they know roughly where you might be. But because I stopped my guns, I didn't uh, stay lit anymore. So I can now drive south with impunity until here where I got detected again, of course. So given that I am detected, uh, I may as well start shooting my main battery in a moment. But I'm still going to work my torpedo run on these ships and with the way the torpedoes launch from this so he seems to be static at the moment going backwards a little bit so I'm going to throw a few down range to that side then I'm going to swing my ship around pivot around to the port side and launch the port tops but look at the white cone see how it's starting to move to the left it means he's turning his throttle on and heading forward so I'm going to aim some out the front there to hopefully get or capture him as he goes driving into uh, a higher speed while I'm doing that with my torps and they're reloading, I might as well be putting rounds down range at him from the main batteries again, because I'm lit anyway. Same rules as before. If you're lit, you might as well be shooting if you can't get away. And there we go. Look at that. So I've hit him with that front group because he stopped reversing and he went forward. So the back group just completely missed. That's fine. It happens. Um, predictive torpedo playing is a, a cool, fun part of this game. We're still putting rounds onto him and he's died now. So, okay. Now here's the the one I really want to hit, the battleship. Nothing more enjoyable for a destroyer player than doing an attack run on a battleship, I think. Or a carrier, actually. I'll take it back. Carriers are more fun. This guy's going pretty slow. You can see the cone again is starting. There we go. It's actually started to accelerate a bit. So I've got to be careful there. I'm going to put these ones forward further because I think he's accelerating away. So I might clip him with a back one, one of those back torpedoes. But I reckon definitely for sure I'm going to hit him with... Yeah, look, I clipped him with two of the back torpedoes. Excellent. Well, the next three, because I predicted that he was accelerating and he was going to keep accelerating, I've aimed them beautifully and bye-bye. Given that there are no enemy around us now, we're going to fast forward quickly to one of the bits of the game that's quite cool. As you can see here, this is the cruiser that was destroyed before and it's just slowly going to sink beneath the waves. It's kind of a nice little moment, isn't it? But, you know, he's on the enemy team, so he's gone now. Let's fast forward on. We've run out of battle time here though and ships and everything so in the end the victory comes up and we've had a win. As we jump into port now you can see we've got new access level 8 and we've got commanders and we've got commander points. That means we get experience for commanders and we get all of these things here we can spend points on. Look at your ship parameters, example here torpedoes, when comparing it to what items you want to use out of this list. So here's a torpedo one. You need to go and hover over everything and learn it all honestly and google it as well i'm not trying to be flippant uh, this is literally a 20 minute video plus just on this one topic it's subjective it 
depends on your ship class and your play style, I do recommend you go and investigate deeper. For now, let's go on with the battle again. And the first thing we do is check out the map, of course. And I'm right in the middle here, so I'm actually going to just drive into the middle. Aggressive play style again. This may not be your cup of tea, but it's what I enjoy doing, particularly when it comes to destroyers. I'm going to make a quick housekeeping point now. The reason I'm doing this video speed up and the colouring, well the video speed up is because I need to cut down or trim the footage, so that's a way of doing it to make the video shorter. And the second thing about the colouring is because this raw footage is impossible to look at when it's sped up, so that colouring sort of makes it easier on your eyes. To gameplay now though, I am lit. Nope, it's gone, good. I'm in the middle of the map, but there's no aircraft carrier, so no aircraft spotting, so that's pretty good. I'm going to try and cap here, and I've just got to sort of watch I don't get pincered. And you can see I'm lit again, so someone's going to start shooting at me shortly for sure. So I think I should pop smoke and tuck in and cap here and see what I can do. And there's a couple of ships around the corner here. I might be able to put some torps in on. I have my speculators go down range. And there's an enemy destroyer right there, right next to us. There's that incoming fire I was expecting. So that enemy destroyer right next to us, though, he's a pretty big threat. He's a player and he's right close. And there's going to be torps going everywhere here. And I've got a cruiser coming in from my team. My first torps I've sent downrange there are not going to hit him because he's going to go behind the island. So I'm, I'm going to hold off on these second ones. I think he just crashed. Let's fire. Uh, and and the, there's torps everywhere. <laughs> it's, there's, there's another set. That's probably from him. Uh, or the cruiser, actually. And I've got my friendly ship coming in now. Uh, I'm going to shoot. I might as well be shooting with my guns while I'm waiting for torps to reload and turning the ship. So many things going on here that I have to do. I have to turn the ship, I have to shoot guns, I have to try and get my torps down range. There's some more torps, I, I think. Uh, he's lobbing them from the back there, or the other destroyer probably is. Let's see if I can clip this destroyer and get rid of him. He's trying to clip me, look at that. Single torps he's sending out too, that's one at a time. Uh, so, I've, I've, yes, I've got him. He was my biggest threat, I think. I could see what he was doing there. Now, let's go narrow band and wide band and try and get that ship and I'm going to get him, but I'm worried about him. I'm going to hit that friendly. I, I timed that well. No, I think it's... Oh, that was close. And bam, we managed to take out that second cruiser and luckily not take out our mate. Uh, that could have been awkward. Good training video, that one. Uh, still reloading, doing that circle work again. I, I circled back through my smoke there a couple of times, if you noticed, and that took the heat off me just for a second. Oh, we've lost our mate anyway, so... Uh, got a nice white cone, nice solid white cone there, so we're going to see if I can clip this guy. I've got to watch out, though, because that wreck of my friendly is going to absorb some of those torpedoes. And this guy's reversing, and that's a silly thing to do in a destroyer. I've been caught doing that before. The reason is you've got no speed, and so he's sort of a bit of a sitting duck. Look at this straight into him thanks uh, don't ever do that if you can avoid it especially this close to the enemy you don't have time to do anything the torps are coming down range at 50 60 70 80 knots sometimes uh, you don't have time to react if you're going at or well, whatever reverse speed is in a destroyer i don't actually know probably have to look that up we'll now press onto the south group again the the field split up we've dominated the middle of the map I haven't capped the centre, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going to go and chase down this battleship. I'm way quicker than him. And I'm going to lob torps into his back end here. They're going to take a while to get there. Some might run out by the time they get there, if I'm not careful. And I'm going to shoot rounds in him as well. He's... that's a good hit. He's shooting happily at enemy... Well, my friendlies off to the port side there. So he's well distracted, but now I can see his back turrets are starting to look at me. I need to be careful here. If I get a broadside from him, it's going to really hurt my face. He's certainly aware of the fact that I'm here, given that torp after torp is coming down at him. Uh, I think we call it a wall of skill, where you just send down as many torps as you can. And see those back turrets right there, just down low? Uh, he's going to shoot them at me, I reckon. I haven't seen him shoot for a while. So in the back there, they are. In the back of my mind, I'm anticipating how long his reload is. And this is some of that subject matter knowledge that you try and pick up. How long is his reload? Oh, look at that. That was a good hit. How long is his reload? and you've got to try and predict it and what you do when someone's shooting at you no matter what ship you're in if you know you're going to take some rounds soon you really want to try and point your bow towards them and that way you make the smallest profile it's, it's sadly not the same as what happened in real naval battles world war ii or even earlier 
you'd cross the T of the enemy formation and you'd shoot down their line and do lots of damage. And it happened with, a good example of this was the USS Johnston, I think it was, uh, across the T of a Japanese formation at the Battle of Samar and managed to hammer the first ship in the line with plenty of damage. And that ship turned away and then the Johnston happened to shoot the second ship and that kept going. They thought there was way more ships there, the Japanese, but it turns out it was just this one little ship blinking away at the front of that formation. Side note, look out for the video I'm doing on the Battle of Samar. It's one of the ones I've got in my list to do. Okay, time to move forward and get into this enemy. Hopefully going to do a clever, smart, well-considered attack run here by throwing a few speculators downrange first and hopefully they get the enemy. So we're going to push, we've got a cap happening at the moment, so we're going to finish that off before we leave the cap circle. So we've dropped our speed. We are spotted, so people are shooting at us. We'll throw some more smoke down to protect us and we're going to throw some more torpedoes down and hopefully get this guy. Although he is turning away now, so mm, could be a miss here. We've we've completed the cap, so we're going to keep shooting. We're going to move forward and be a bit aggressive again, because that is my play style. Um, and my torps ran out on that guy on the right, so that's a bit frustrating. But that's okay. We'll keep closing in on him. We're going to throw some torps over at this guy. Hopefully he'll drive into these and it'll be a nice easy kill, but we'll put some main battery rounds down range to help out. He's clearly taken offense to that because he's sending some back our way. I do want to pursue this bigger ship though. He is quite the threat for our team in what he can do if he's a good shot. He is also a nice kill for us if we can get some torpedoes on him. Again, battleships are a nice target. Carriers are the preferred target for a destroyer, but you know. we're going to do another attack run on this other ship as well. Uh, five seconds before these torps load, so we're going to do this circle turn. Hopefully, we can just outturn his guns a bit. You can see his secondaries blinking away at us. Uh, and doing the lead thing, watch him turn away potentially. Uh, oh, that battleship missed the damn torpedoes again. So, oh, what a. There we go. Good hit. Game over. Didn't actually kill that other ship that we sent the torpedoes at earlier, but what we did do was get it cracking. Five kills. So, really happy with that. Uh, look at that. Just miles above everybody else there. What a great ship, you know. It was so much fun to play that too. But importantly, look at all the damage I could have taken. And fact that I had no aircraft carrier to worry about made it a little bit easier. Back to port now and I have so much to do here and so little video time. Our commander here has received some experience and he managed to score himself a point that we can spend. You can purchase more points with the accelerated commander training function. We're going to have a quick look across here now. I tend to prefer to use priority target which tells me when ships are actually looking at me. So I'm not just detected, they're looking at me and it gives me a count. Uh, this is now a really nice ship as we know and it's got a skilled commander but we did manage to get a fair bit of experience in that last battle and it should be enough for the Clemson as you can see. So we're going to unlock the Clemson and when we do this it's going to come up with an option now for buying a commander. It's part of it. And we want to pick the senior commander in this instance because we've got doubloons. 25 doubloons is what he costs and he gives us three points automatically. You can see there he's got three of three. So we're going to pick priority target and then we get onto the second row now and this is the one I'm going to pick last stand but you've got a few other options here you can do the torpedo one and things like that uh, but last stand is useful because it means we can still keep moving even if we get our module shot out from underneath us. We can have a flick through and have a look at this ship now. Uh, we've got to make sure we go up and do the camo. The modules, the first area we'll visit here we can see we want to get down that Langley line. Uh, the exterior we need to go in and buy all our flags that we want we've got more flags now because we've got some uh, awards in the last game so you can flags for them as i said earlier different type of camo now there's different things about camo you need to learn and look at for yourself but in the interest of getting through this video and getting it as short as possible we're going to smash through and go to battle now surprise surprise i'm back in the middle of the map you did not see that coming i'm expecting okay the trouble here though is that I've got enemy carriers and as you see on the map there's a red mark, look up, enemy planes. Hit the P or Papa key, I'm going to turn my anti-aircraft off. The reason is I want to try and slip past this guy without him seeing me. If you look at that cog over the map there, the data there tells me it's 2.4 kilometers detectability by air. So I'm going to try and slink around the outside here and hopefully miss him. Or he'll miss me. If I had my anti-aircraft guns on, They'd be shooting now, possibly, and lighting me up. 
next thing happening though is I've got a destroyer straight in front of me um, a couple of them actually and that's also a problem the reason is because I think it's 6.8 kilometers the detectability range of this thing but the torpedoes are potentially not going to be able to reach that range so and we've got another destroyer out on the right hand side here so I'm getting crowded I'm getting pincered and I've got enemy aircraft that I need to be thinking about so it might be time to throw some torps down range here and think about that destroyer on the other side of the island to our uh, starboard side I have been detected briefly and I'm detected again so these guys are all starting to think oh there's a destroyer up close here um, there's another one of ours on the left there so hopefully he might distract them I'm holding off on torps though because I'm worried about hitting him and on this side I know this guy was coming around so I pop smoke and I'm going to lob torps up this guy and hopefully collect him uh, one set where he was going and then one set behind him and oh he's managed to bloody well go in between them what's the chances so do this again aiming forward a bit and aiming straight at him and this set will collect him yeah that was a lot better destroyers die pretty easily to torpedoes so you only have to get one maybe two hits and you've got him but I can't believe he actually dodged that first set well well played mate well played now look at how I'm circling here notice I'm not lit it's because I laid that smoke in a big curve and now I'm looping around in it and everybody else is already lit so all I have to care about is making sure that no one's getting too close to me and that I don't lob torps into my friends and that enemy torps don't come sailing into my smoke so I can shoot them at that arc because my ship's going to my friendly ship there is going to be out of the way by the time my torps get in hopefully I can support him I'm going to try and help him as much as possible uh, and looks like it's a good shot here yeah look at that nice so supporting my allies with good torping this time around though I've actually come outside the circle a bit too far that was a bit silly but this ship I'm shooting at the Kalzru is uh, a little bit slower than that destroyer and I'll get a good set on him I've got some more tops going over the back there that shot poorly and uh, that's a bit annoying but I'm gonna collect I'm gonna get anybody now it's gone through interestingly though have a look the aircraft carriers here they're right there in front of me uh, so I'm gonna hold off on shooting this Carl's through he's not actually shooting at me at the moment I'm gonna take out the carrier because this is a massive threat for all destroyers and everybody in the game on our team but destroyers in particular because he's gonna light us up all day so I have punched off some rounds at him and now I'm gonna the Carl's has got torps though you can see them coming in I've uh, punched some torps under that carrier and he's gone and that's awesome now because once he's finished with this last flight of planes that he's got he can't launch any more planes mainly because he's underwater so that helps my team out I've taken a bit of a sacrifice there though because everybody else has now started shooting at me or had been shooting at me uh, this guy here my torps aren't gonna load quick enough so I'll try and get some rounds off no nope. you know what turn on to this guy finish off the cars with some HE I'm on fire uh, got no repair at the moment but I've got my boost so I'm gonna get that going should be able to get a torp run on this guy and the other guy as well that's coming through but I think it might be a bit close yeah that was too close so I, I don't know what the minimum range of torps is but that one was unfortunately just inside it uh, my repairs back up now but I'm not going to use that just yet because I'm too busy trying to get a torp run in and well I can't use it anyway because I'm dead if you want intensity that was pretty intense we were just in the middle of it oh I got a torp here that's awesome I love the after effect tor after death tor bits they're cool that's pretty intense though that scene there and that's why I love destroyers there's so much fun going on just then I can't believe that guy there on the right is still alive how nobody shot him it's probably because we're all bots on my team I'm guessing uh, how about nobody shot him I don't know you don't ever leave a ship like that because it's still a set of guns shooting at you it's like a one-shot kill the sequence that we just did though with the destroyer the circling the smoke the torps everywhere the ships all over the place I'd go back to that a few times if I were you and just have a look at how I did it what I did right what I did wrong there were probably opportunities there I didn't take and there were probably decisions that I did take that you weren't expecting it's a good bit of intense battle to unpack and then you've got to think about all the things going on and how you can actually have that situational awareness in your head I think it's time to move on to the port though because something exciting is happening and that is I've bought myself a South Carolina or a battleship I do love battleships I think they epitomize what World of Warships is all about it's big it's got giant guns uh, it's 
impressive to look at and they only get bigger than this uh, as you go up into the tiers but it just it just looks dominating and it's so much fun to take one of these into a battle and fire those big guns uh, as we check out the ship itself and have a bit of a look at stuff here we'll, we'll click on the artillery and we'll look at the main battery guns and you can see there we have four turrets of two uh, 305 mil guns and there's also 20 76 mil 76.2 mil secondary guns uh, lots of secondaries to shoot down range but their actual range is probably a little bit less than what you would hope for uh, you've got to keep that in mind because it's really only for the when that destroyer gets awfully close to you or something like that otherwise the secondaries are pretty useless unless you boost them up but we've got those four turrets with two 305 mil cannons on each or guns on each that's not a bad effort fault firing range is 15.7 kilometers as we go into the modules here you can see i've already upgraded the hull and the gun director so we've increased its gun range and i've applied some flags and i've applied some camo and i've got this thing ready to go so let's probably spill it into a battle shall we there are lots and lots and lots of things to learn here the first one is that that armor piercing rounds on your battleship 8100 damage that's what you want to be using as your primary rounds but you've got to be careful you understand how to shoot it. second thing is as you can see on the map there i've put a pathway i'm already detected by the way how good's that uh i've put a pathway in and i've got my turrets already turned out that side the first thing i did when i joined this battle was pick the side that my turrets needed to be on before it even got into any contact and that way because the turrets turn so slowly i've just sort of got into a position now and i'm firing already because my turrets were there good to go and i've picked that distinct direction and a citadel straight away look at that that's what you want that's what battleships are all about is getting citadels on cruisers broadside or enemy battleships as well but i've picked a direction i know i'm going to be fairly safe because there's screening ships between me and the enemy here but I picked a direction so that I've got my broadside aiming out there. What I have to be careful of is as I start getting targeted, I'm going to get shot at full broadside and risk exposing my broadside to citadels from the enemy. So I'm hopeful, and I've turned a little bit away here so you can see the angle I've gone on. I'm still engaging. That was a bit unlucky. I, that's called splashing the enemy. Uh, put all the rounds around him and not a single round hit him um, I'm pulling away a little bit here my main threat area is to the far right for me personally but the center of the map needs a bit of attention so I'm trying to keep the angle as such that I'm able to support whichever area that needs it the most because I've got that gun range look at the big circle on the map that's my gun range and I don't even have what's called a spotting plane which increases your gun range further uh, so I'm picking targets as I see fit. We've got a bit of a nose on there. It didn't do a lot. And that's part and parcel for what can happen. Now, looking back over to the right, seeing what's going on there. We're probably in a bit of trouble out here. There's four versus one and a half, two. I'm going to keep shooting the ships in the middle here, though, because I'm getting a bit more of that uh, side profile of the enemy. Uh, although, now having said that, this guy's turning towards me. Um, I've got time in a battleship to make assessments and think about things so you know it's a th almost 30 second reload rate there so I've stopped my ship here I'm not a threat from anybody uh, I'm going to take my time here and have a bit of a think and look at where I want to shoot uh, as I see there my secondary batteries I think I got the range wrong before didn't I uh, I'm just going to reverse up now because I don't want to close too quickly to those guys on the right and I want to still be able to get shots in on these guys here and you can see I've got islands and things in the way, so I'm sort of trying to work around that. There's a guy on the left there. He's almost a one-shot for me. Uh, he's dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, this guy here I'm going to support. He's capping our base, so I need to clear that out. And see gunfire coming in now from that right flank because we've lost a ship out there and the other one's running away. But because my nose is pointed towards them, they're going to have the same trouble penetrating my ship as I was there. If you recall, we looked at in one of the videos the armor on a ship and turrets are always fairly heavily armored because you don't want rounds going in there because they'll blow things up and from the front on you get a lot of turret armor so these ships are all going to shoot at me they're going to damage me sure and he will set fire to me but they're 
I'm tanking damage, and that's what battleships also shouldn't do. I shouldn't be hiding at the back of the map doing nothing. Uh, the guy in the middle on our base has died, so now I can get some good broadsides under these targets. It's a bit unlucky there, actually. That was a pretty good salvo, I thought. <laughs> a bit sad. But we wiped a fair bit of hit points off of this guy, and I'm going to keep pressing on the guys on the right flank whilst still shooting at this guy here. And so my nose is still sort of pointed to the guys on the right flank but my broadside's going to take this guy out. I'm always planning though. Oh, there you go, fire. Battleship's best friend. Uh, I'm going to let that burn for a little while because I can repair that with my consumable down there under the T-key, which uh, gives you hit points back. And you can see on my ship on the left there, there's a grey bar next to that yellow strip. The grey bar is how, much, how many hit points I'm going to return. Uh, importantly, what's going on in the background here, well, there's some torps coming in, so I turned away from those, but... They were fired earlier. I've alt clicked on this guy so that when he gets into secondary range, my secondaries will start shooting. Now watch this. I'm going to shoot some armor piercing at this guy from front on. Huge cannons, but they didn't do a lot to him because that's what happens with destroyers. You get over penetrations and stuff. I'm worried though about this guy sending torps at me, so I'm going to turn towards him and hopefully, yeah, there, look at that. <laughs> Almost perfect timing, wasn't it? The we'll probably get two. So we took a fair bit of damage, we're flooding, so that's what I was waiting with my repair for as well. I held off on the fire because if I took some torp damage I'd get flooding. I've quickly repaired that and I've also repaired my ship with the T-key and I've got some hit points back. My secondaries are getting hits, look at that, 8 so far with a fire as well caused by someone. Uh, and I'm shooting at the destroyer with my secondaries. Now I've tried to outmaneuver him here to get my guns under him and I've had a bit of trouble because he's quicker. So I've tricked him a little bit here, he's staying behind me, I've tricked him as if I was going to turn around, but then I've turned back and my back guns are going to be onto him. I'm going to wear some torps, I always know that, but come on, come on, come on, shoot, three, two, one, and yes, that's what we wanted. The trouble is, he put a torp up my rear end, and now I'm flooding for 30 seconds or so there. Uh, I'm trying to turn my front guns around, I've lost them out of the fight because of that manoeuvre that was happening. The secondaries I've made sure I've clicked on the enemy there with my alt click and yeah look, I was bleeding hit points there so he's managed to sh smash me but he's the last ship left and we should be able to kill him pretty quick and that'll be the end of it. What I'm pleased about here is that well, obviously I scored well in the game but when I go to the detailed report I tanked a lot of damage and that should be my job. There are so many conversations about how to play every single type of ship and different people with different styles and so on. Uh, the demonstration here of a battleship, battleships are my favourite ship in the game, uh, followed by destroyers. The style I have, you can see, favours team play. It's really what people should be doing. There's a lot of farmers out there. Um, <laughs> this is an important part here. I'll <laughs> get the propulsion up. So I think we bring this up to... 17 k's an hour or something 17 knots rather it's terrible but folks play to farm credits and things like that and it is a bit frustrating in the higher tiers uh, i think you should be playing the game for fun that's what i do and with that in mind we'll finish off here with the south carolina this is the last in the training videos i thank you very much for joining me on these i hope you enjoyed this journey i did There'll be lots more videos coming up, and I look forward to catching up with you in battle. Happy sailing, folks.